It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. Uh, we are the Brilliant Idiots. And this week's podcast is brought to you by Brock Hampton's new album, Ginger. Releases via Question. Uh, Question Everything in RCA Records is now and is now available for streaming and downloading. I got the weirdest text the other day. I got a text from my man Shy LaBeouf. And you know, Shy, if you ever speak to Shy, he don't he don't like when he texts, he don't like text in complete sentences. Right. Right? I'm gonna read the text to you. Cause I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Capital letters. All capital. One word. Brock Hampton. Good people. Might have saved me. Be nice. Wow. <laughs> I, still, I still don't know what Shy is talking about. But uh, Brockhampton, album Ginger, next chapter of Brockhampton's rapid rise over the last two years. Ginger includes recently released tracks, I've Been Born Again, Boy Bye, If You Pray Right, and the new single, No Halo. Okay, Ginger and the new single, No Halo, is available now for streaming and downloading. You can also receive a digital copy of the album when purchasing Ginger merch on whatsginger.com. And I'm going to just assume Shia LaBeouf is a fan. Yeah. 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 Now, the episode is also brought to you by uh, Boost Mobile. Did you know that? Nope. Yeah, Boost Mobile doesn't offer one great thing. It offers many great things like super reliable, super fast nationwide network and four lines for $100 a month with unlimited gigs for data, talk, and text. I will repeat that because that's insane. Four lines for $100 a month with unlimited gigs for data, talk, and text. Okay? My old one line was more than that for all those things. You know, it's four free LG sty uh, Stylo five phones that the whole family can get as well with it. Boost Mobile, the switch that gives you more offers and coverage is not available everywhere. Free phone requires port and additional terms and conditions may apply. Visit BoostMobile.com or your nearest retailer for details. Yeah, let's start this show. Charlotte. Uh, you got any church announcements? Oh, uh, Moscow. Next week. Hey. If you're listening to this in Moscow, go get it. Um, Australia. Couple of weeks after that. Hey. Sydney shows, I think, are sold out, so we're adding more of those. I think we add another Melbourne show as well. TheAndrewShows.com. We're doing Perth, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, and I think another city is Adelaide. TheAndrewShows.com. Get those tickets. And I think the New York City uh, show in November is almost sold out. Same for Boston, man. So go get those tickets immediately. TheAndrewShows.com. All the Matador tour dates. That's it. And I, um, my, my, the paperback for my second national bestseller, Oof. Shook One Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me, it'll Oof. be out uh, Tuesday, September 3rd. And um, also on September 3rd, I'll be at the uh, Barnes & Nobles on Fifth Avenue with Rick Ross because Rick Ross' book comes out on September 3rd. His book is called Hurricanes. So we'll be having a conversation about both our books. So Barnes & Nobles. Oh, no, actually, it's not the one in Fifth Avenue. It's Barnes & Noble's Union Square. Ooh! Yeah, 33 East 17th Street at 7 p.m. I'll be there with Rick Ross, and I'll be signing copies of my new book, Shook One, Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me, and Rick Ross will be signing copies of his book, Hurricanes. And then on September 5th, I'll be at the Powerhouse Arena in Brooklyn at 7 p.m. with Dr. Jessica Clemens having a, a discussion about my favorite subject, mental health, and also signing copies of my book, Shook one anxiety playing tricks on me. The paperback will be out September third. So it's a beautiful thing. Now where do we start, man? Do you want to start? Have, do you want to start with this 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 special that I told you about when I saw it on Broadway, and I told you it was phenomenal, and I said it's probably his best work, and I've never been big on his stand up. Yeah, I just haven't. Yeah, yeah. Not that I don't think he's funny. Cause yeah. I thought his sketch show was hilarious. Yeah, Killing Me Softly was cool. Yeah, but I never was like, ha ha. Dave Chappelle. Right. This one? This one is one of them ones, bro. Yeah. I mean, he's the GOAT. Chappelle is the GOAT. I don't see why you would say he's not. He's the GOAT. It is it uh, is undeniable. I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay. Um, what I have seen of it is exceptional, but he's always exceptional. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a really cool thing to see happen culturally because, you know, Maybe like six months ago, right, before we dropped Views from the Sis, my last one, mm -hmm. I think on this podcast, I said, if this is successful, it's going to open up 
the doors for the goats, the, the, the greats, the biggest comics in the world to get back to being edgy again and to tell these jokes. Because mm-hmm. everybody was kind of like running scared. Now, I'm not saying that in any way Chappelle's watching views and this isn't going, oh, I can do this now. You know? But what it, what it did is it starts the ripple effect. And like... I think everybody plays a role on their level in the ecosystem. You know, I think about like with mental health for you, you're not the first guy to talk about mental health, Mm -hmm. but you have a powerful, potent voice. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you speak about something, it echoes, right? And other people pay attention. There is somebody who told you about mental health. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. That guy has been speaking about mental health. Forever. Forever. (laughs) Right? But you start speaking about it and then it becomes this national movement of awareness mm-hmm. for especially in the black community, right? And timing matters too. Timing, timing, size. Timing is really everything. All these things matter. And uh I just thought it was so cool to see one of the goats up there laying it on the line, not worrying, not worrying about you know what could happen. I mean, taking a very different approach than he did in past specials where he, I thought he was a little apologetic about certain topics. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. I thought he was like very accommodating, you know, to what people might feel. And this one just going, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking great. I'm gonna go for it. And like, that's what and I he, wanted to happen from views, bro. I wanted to bring comedy money, back. Bro. Well, yeah. If you got fuck you money, why do you care? That's my thing. I yeah. always see like that with artists, with musicians. Like, yeah. if you already got all the money, why don't you just make the fucking music you want? Yeah. Why are you trying to cater to an audience? Why are you trying to make people like you? Just do your best art, and that's it. I promise you, everything else will fall into place. That's it. That's it. So that's what that's what I'll say. Like a lot of people have been tweeting me like, "Yo, that you know, they're, they're giving all Dave all the credit for for the you know going against PC culture and going against you know cancel culture. You've been doing that for a while, blah blah blah." And it's like, yeah, but like that's part of the system. It's it's not like somebody does it first or mm-hmm. so, it. Somebody probably did it before me. And I had a louder voice than them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was able to reach some people. And yeah. then he was able to reach some people. That you're just playing your part in the ecosystem. And one day I'm going to be on Chappelle's level where I'm going to be able to voice things that's going to have that much of effect. But it's like, it's just so cool. If you believe that we're all connected on some kind of matrix, it's cool to see something I think I really leaned hard into yeah. reach the highest level. And even if I played a little part to get in there. And I think it's different though. It's different because. It's, 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 it's the mystique of Dave Chappelle, right? We've seen Dave Chappelle walk away from $50 million before. Yeah. So this this narrative right here feeds into his, the rebellion of Dave. I'm a, yeah. Dave Chappelle's a rebel. Yeah. Like, you can't tell Dave Chappelle what to do. Dave Chappelle's going to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's how Dave Chappelle chooses to stay sane. Yeah. And with you, it's like still the underdog in a lot of ways who don't have shit to lose. So you I'm might as well swing for the fucking fences. I also don't have fuck you money. You don't have fuck you money. There's a different, like, there's you know a different level of risk. It's Absolutely. like, I'm putting it on the table and it's all, Dave, Dave I'm has all done in. It. Dave, is, Dave has had the TV shows. Mm-hmm. He's done the movies. So he's like, look, I did all that already. This is what the fuck I want to do now. Yeah. You may still want to do some of those things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but yeah. either way, you're going to be able to do them on your terms. Right. Because like, Nobody really gives a shit. And I, I think that's the one thing that Dave is really exposing. And I think it's another reason, too. A lot of this shit that Dave is talking about is coming from a personal place. Right. He's like, I'm here to defend my fucking friends yeah. <laughs> that got caught up in this yeah. bullshit. He's had personal things happen to him because yeah. he's received backlash. So it's all coming from a personal place. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So being that it's coming from a personal place, people accept it just a little bit more. It's like, okay, this guy's not trying to be... A rebel for the sake of being a rebel. No. He's not saying fuck PC culture for the sake of saying fuck PC He's like, culture. I've been gotten thrown out of here. My and friends I'm are thrown of out of here and, and it affects me yes. personally in that way. Yes. Absolutely. Um Yeah, I think I think it's great. I think it's great to see. You know what I mean? It's a you know, it there's always a bummer because like when Dave Chappelle does a joke that you have a similar joke to, there's so much gravity around Dave, you just gotta kill the joke. I don't believe that. Duval said the same thing to me earlier. Duval was like, man, and Duval don't and Duval don't give it up for nothing. Yeah, but for Dave, it's different. Like for Dave, and and I have a joke that I think it's it's more developed. I think it's a better joke, to be honest. It's, let it's it rip a, then. Nah, it, nah, I gotta, bro, I gotta, let gotta it take it out. I gotta Fuck take that, it out. Heavy. I gotta take it out. It don't matter if another player got the same move. 
All right, you might have perfected it a little bit better. Well, yeah, but at the same time, we have this code where, you know, in comedy, it's like it, an independent or like a unique idea is so valuable because that's our only currency that you got to just go, all right, bro, you got that but one. But if you know you didn't steal it. Now, if you didn't get this idea until after you heard yeah. Dave do it, then I that's would be stealing. like, I get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you had the idea before he did it no, and I've you been had to I've been to I mean, people who listen to this right now, you've seen me do it on tour, right? It's the MJ joke. You've seen me do it on tour for a long, long time. And um, and it's just it's one of those things where it's like we have a couple similar ideas. I have a whole other section of the bit, which is the thing I really like. And I think it like leads to that he doesn't touch upon it all. But we have a couple similar ideas. And it's like I have too much respect for comedy and a guy like Dave yeah. to where I would want to I would want to continue to do that. I might want to release. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. But I might on some level want to release the joke to like teach people. Hey, Dave Chappelle has never seen me do this joke. I've never seen Dave Chappelle do that joke. But we both came out with a similar idea. Yeah. And like this happens sometimes. Like don't get freaked out when you see two people say something similar because people have similar ideas. Like you go on Twitter, you're going to see a clever tweet about something. And, I mean, look, even the Jesse Smollett joke that he did. Hilarious. I said that on this podcast the day it happened. What? The, the joke about like why would a person who's racist and homophobic watch Empire? I, I did a question of the day oh, about yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, but he got he got the whole he had the whole his joke was just Jussé Smollett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A French actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who got assaulted? Right. You know what I'm saying? I guess what I'm saying is like a bunch of people had had come up with that yeah, take, yeah, yeah. and I think what we should do when that happens is go, oh shit, we're having parallel thinking with one of the greatest. Yeah, but if you That's have, I don't have That's a problem a with that. If you yeah. have one thought, like he. Like he had one thought, but he built out this whole other world for that right. one thought. So yeah. if even if you have the same thought, but you build a whole other world out for it, why not? Eh, why I not let it the fuck rip? The know. MJ joke was the only joke that I saw. That and by the way, I died laughing when he said that. But there was no like socially redeeming value to that joke. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was some nigga shit. <laughs> like, 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 what the fuck? You you got molested when you was a kid. Yeah. The only thing you got to show for it is uncomfortable Thanksgiving dinners. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at least you got to say you got your dick sucked by the king of pop. No. Yeah. That wouldn't do it for me. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. I don't know yeah, if yeah, fuck yeah, the yeah. king of pop or not. It's, it's, you laugh at it. Right. But that was the only thing that didn't have anything deeper to it. Right. To me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. The, tra the, the transgender joke had a deeper meaning to it. One of them. When he, well, a lot of them did. But right. the one in particular, when he was like, the transgender looked at him and said... I don't want to give away his jokes. You got to watch the special. Yeah, but, go watch it. Watch yeah, it. We watch support this. We but it's this, this one when the I'm going to definitely say this one because I'm not going to take this out of context. But the transgender, when the transgender yeah. said to Dave, uh, you know, when you make jokes about R. Kelly, they say you're normalizing R. Kelly. When you make jokes about us, how come they never say you're normalizing Ooh. transgenders? Ooh. That's, that's a bar. Ooh. That's a bar. Ooh. You got to make you think. Hot. like. It's a, it's a man. I, I personally think this is Dave's best stand-up special. Really? But I've never been a huge Dave Chappelle stand-up person. Right. I, I enjoy Dave. Kill yeah. Me Softly is a good special. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The other joints he did on Netflix, they were cool. Yeah. This one was hilarious. Yeah. Like Everybody go out and watch it, man. I, go it, support it. It was great. And you know what? Uh, the joke, he's, it wasn't even a joke. The observation he did when he, he, that's, on net, he that's on Instagram, so we can talk about that, but when he talked about he was doing the impersonation of people who... Um, I didn't like that. What? Tell me why. So he opens play up... The clip, play the clip, Taylor. You, you'll play it. He, he opens up the special with this, this, and the you know the first part of the joke is, you know, the blah, 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 write the Constitution. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then the second part of the joke is like, here's another impression. Is, you got to get out of here. You can't say that. You're canceled. You're this, this. Who's that impression of? And then he looks at the audience. You motherfuckers. You guys are the worst. You mm -hmm. guys are this. You guys are the... We can't say shit. We can't have no fun anymore. It's like, you perform to sold out arenas every single weekend. There's no way you could believe that. You have sold out crowds every weekend, loving everything that you're doing around the world. Nobody's trying to cancel you. Nobody's triggered. Nobody, nothing. You can't truly believe that, right? You might be speaking about 10 people on Twitter, but like I, I'm a comic, right? I perform sold out theaters around the world. I don't have these people. And if somebody does get triggered, the audience turns on them. If they go, you can't say that. 
my audience will start consuming them. That's piranhas. But it's the same reason when you can see 10 people tell you that they love you on social media, yes. but one say fuck you. And you pay attention. You pay attention so to So my it. feeling is like, you, you're you too smart to shed, to like put a spotlight on that. Like, like It's what? hard not to though. No, but there's a different way that you could do it. Right? I get that you want to address cancel culture and I get that you mm-hmm. want to do that. Right? Like, but... Even when I put out views, the point wasn't about the audience. The point was about comics. I was like, yo, comics, stop being pussies. This is what we do. We do comedy. Go out there and do comedy. The audience, it's up to you to get the audience to laugh at it and make them feel comfortable. It's not up to you to tell the audience how to laugh. It's up to you to make them. But calling them out is part of not being pussy, though, I would think. Nah, because the best, in my opinion, the best thing is showing, not telling. Like, Yeah, but calling them dumb and letting them know they pussy in that way... <laughs> I love Pete Davidson. You yeah. know what I mean? And Pete did it this weekend too, but yeah. it wasn't in a joke form. Right. So it backfired on you. Right. But when you do it in a joke form the way Dave did, because if you notice, everybody in the audience started yelling out Trump, which is another ill part of, of nuance to me. Like, Trump ain't responsible for everything, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> right? But everybody was like, Trump, Trump, Trump. And he was like, no, that's you. And by the way, he did that on the special. I don't know where he shot the special at. When he did it in New York, the mm-hmm. New York crowd was the same way. Yeah. He did that same joke in New York, and everybody in that theater was like, Trump, Trump, Trump. He's like, no, that's you. I thought that's a great way to put the mirror back on people, man. I I, I love that. I, I love that, and I love the mirror. I just think the most effective mirror is when you show it instead of tell. Right? Like, when you expose it. That, that's just me. I thought he did with the setup, though. Yeah, the, maybe. The setup of breaking it down and saying, yeah. this person and that person and that person. And everybody yelling out, hey, Trump, Trump. They didn't see that curve coming. Right, No, right, motherfucker, right. it's you. Right. You're basically saying, hey, you you criticize Trump about this, but that, you're that actually could be doing part the of same it. thing. Yeah, you're doing the same exact shit. Yeah. So we saw it this week with Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet apologized. I couldn't believe it. The social media. I couldn't believe simply it. Simply because she had a suggestion. She said, look, how about somebody register people to vote at Popeye's with these long lines? Yeah. Now, I don't know if you guys pay attention, but from now until October of next year, everywhere you go where there's a crowd, it's going to be somebody there registering people to vote. Right. I don't give a fuck if it's the mall. Yeah. I don't care if it's a concert. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if it's a fucking open uh, a fair, mm-hmm. uh, any place you go to meet people registering people to vote. Yeah. So for her to, to say that, for anybody who's really about that registering people to vote life, yeah, that's basic. Yeah, that's not even a bright idea. Right. That's just like, hey, it's a lot of people that pop by. You go register people to vote. It was a kid in Charlotte, North Carolina. His name was um, David Ledbetter. I think his name was. Okay. A teenager. Yeah. That's what he was doing this weekend. Yeah. Not be- before Janelle Monet said that. He was at Popeye's registering people to vote. Right. So I'm seeing people killing Janelle Monet. They're like, you're not taking into consideration voter suppression and, you know, uh the, 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 who what what makes you what makes you think that all black people aren't registered to vote? First of all, she ain't say shit about black people. She just said register to vote. We don't know who's in line at Popeye's. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't know who the fuck is eating these chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Right? We can guess. We can, maybe <laughs> if they, I don't think you make sixty something million dollars. I not, saw mad white uh, people in line. I'm not gonna lie. We were in Chicago and we went to one Popeyes in the black neighborhood, and them was chicken like, sandwiches that. were gone, bro. Done. We went to a Popeyes <laughs> in a mall in a white neighborhood. They were there. They might not be there now. When'd you go? Cause they, they completely sold out everywhere now. Oh wow. Well, when we went there, it was good. It was Friday. We went there Friday. Yeah, they completely so they had they, they, Popeye Yo, put out a press release. Wild cultural experience. Talk to me. We were we were in Chicago, right? You know, I do all the vlogs and everything like that. So I'm with Alex and Mark, and we pull up to the mall, and there's a SWAT team in front of the mall. They got their guns out and everything, and I roll up on the SWAT team with my camera, and I go, "Y'all protecting the Popeyes, right?" They're like, "Can we help you? Is there a problem?" I'm like. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, there's a chicken sandwich like sold out everywhere. And that's it. <laughs> like, I got pussy real quick. I was like, no, nah, everything, everything's okay, blah, blah, blah. I started Alex started walking away. I was like, fuck that. He's like, I ain't getting arrested again. Security. Right? <laughs> so we go down. We go to start eating the Popeye sandwiches. We start eating the Popeye Y'all sandwiches. Had it? Yeah, we went down there. We got I the Popeye even had sandwich. It. It's delicious. We go down. We take two bites out of Popeye sandwich. All of a sudden, one of the SWAT guys walks up. Comes into the mall downstairs, so the Popeyes comes up. He goes, "Hey man, 
I'm sorry about that. We just overreacted a little bit, and uh, you know, we, we didn't know that you were just kind of joking around. We found out about the whole Popeyes thing. So uh, enjoy the chicken sandwiches. Alex is looking <laughs> at me like, "Is this what it's like to be white?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they knew it was you. Fucking SWAT team. They might know it was you. They might have been like, "Oh, that's Andrew Show." I think I think one yeah. of them might know something that's like all that. That was. But just looking at Alex's eyes as he's eating this chicken sandwich, like slowly looking up, it's like, like a Japanese dude. Sandwich. Is it really this good? Oh. Yeah. No, it's it's really that good, man. Better than Chick Fil A? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Really? Yeah. And you don't like Chick Fil A? No, I'm not anti Chick Fil A. I think Chick Fil A is just a chicken sandwich. You don't like, and you're not a hype beast either. You're no. actually a contrarian. It's, it's, I should I, hate it by, yes. by my nature. <laughs> it was so fucking good. Really? It was. It was so fucking good that I'm positive. I'm positive that it will kill you. Uh, meaning, like, they have put so much unhealthy into that sandwich <laughs> that it will kill you. Yeah. There's no way that they'll sell that regularly because it would cause serious bodily High harm. High cholesterol, arteries clogged. Son, you bite... The the pickle is not one of these flimsy, like, McDonald's or Chick-fil-A little, like, tiny potato chip thin pickle. It's a... No, that Chick-fil-A pickle girth. is crispy as fuck, bro. Not in my experience. Not like this. Not like really? Popeyes. Yeah, it did. It didn't have it like Popeyes. I mean, this is, this is, this is like you know what's going on, right? No, what's going on? Like they just need to distract us, right? It's like yeah. distract us from what? The Epstein shit. Like, <laughs> man, shut the fuck up, man. You know. <laughs> Like we were on their ass, we were on the billionaire's ass about Epstein, like these pedophile rings. What if and they're like, are quick, get him a chicken sandwich. Flesh. They are, <laughs> son. That's what they do. What if they grinded Epstein up? That's the ingredient. <laughs> they grinded Epstein up, and the reason it's so tender son. is because you are what you eat. Never used to eat young girls. <laughs> you don't realize what they listen. Who runs? Who runs social media? Let's be honest. Black Twitter. Black people run social media. But they didn't give a fuck about Epstein. Nah, but they were starting to give a fuck. And the nah. second they started to give a fuck, these billionaire motherfuckers were like, quick, get a chicken sandwich out there. Nah. Get that chicken sandwich <laughs> out there on these sh- streets. I, I'm not going to lie. That shit did come out of nowhere because I remember coming in here one day. The Amazon is on fire. They're like, quick, get a chicken sandwich. I'm serious. That's all they do. If there is some natural disaster, is get a chicken sandwich. I'm Listen, I came in here one day and all the interns were talking about this chicken sandwich from Popeye's. And I'm like... I'm about to get one of these shit. So I text my wife. I said, yo, I actually called her. I said, yo, Popeye's got this chicken sandwich. And she was like, don't even fucking think about it. Charlie you man. Don't diet. You mind your fucking business. Black men cheat when it comes to chicken. Nah, I didn't. I really didn't. I was yo, faithful. Black I was faithful men to my diet. chicken. That's, that's a real. Is that's that good a re- for real? Bro, let me tell. Can you trust me about some hype beast shit? If I'm hype beasting, it must be real. There's only one person in here who said it was average, and that's Taylor. And I, nobody trusts Taylor opinion. It's so good. It's Thank you. You don't, don't know like nothing. Like, that. like their chicken's too great. It made my stomach hurt last It's okay. It's okay. Yo, it's okay. We don't need none of you right here, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you. This is a delicious chicken sandwich. It's the best fast food chicken sandwich I've ever had. Wow. That's hands down. And I'm okay. not even a fast food guy. I don't even eat bread. I'll take your word for it. Unfucking real Wow. Well, I think it was a cultural phenomenon. You know, we That's were, what it is. People felt like they was missing out. FOMO, dog. That's all it is. Motherfucking FOMO, dude. It's as simple as that. Slide a little bit to your right if you for, can. Paige? Paige, slide a little bit to your right if you can, please. Okay, this is a this is like some some saying that we can look at. We'll look at that in a second. I appreciate a that. A saying? What's the saying? I don't know. It's a, it's a meme or something like that. She, she sent us. It's a chicken sandwich comparison. We'll get there. We'll get there. We got this, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do this every week. But uh, <laughs> but no, with, the, with Janelle Monet, they got mad at Janelle because she told people to register to vote. And it reminds me of what Chappelle was saying because I'm like... Yo, slide to your right so you stay I'm like, yeah, none of these things have anything to do with it. Number one, if you're mad that... If you're talking about voter suppression, voter registration has nothing to do with voter suppression. Yeah, that's how you stop voter suppression is by registering. By the way, yeah. voter suppression doesn't affect you right. if you're not registered to vote because you can't vote, you stupid motherfuckers. Yeah, and if exactly. you are registered to vote but you decide to sit on your motherfucking hands and not go out there and vote, guess mm-hmm. what? Voter suppression doesn't affect you then. So that throws that stupid ass theory out the window. Mm-hmm. Then you have people saying, oh, black people have been involved in all the elections lately and black women uh, specifically voted for Hillary in 2016. Very true. But do you, do, do you also know that 
2016, the black voter turnout was the lowest it's ever been in 20 years. And this is after having a record high in 2012. Do you, Seven, do you yeah. want to know why? Because black people didn't go out and vote. Do you want to know why that was? Because they didn't have nobody on the ballot they wanted to vote for. No. It's because a week before the elections, what? they dropped those Hennessy buffalo wings. Man, shut the they, fuck up. <laughs> No. Charlemagne, this is a fact. This no. is no. this is no. fact. No. You didn't notice? No. It, 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 a week before Hennessy Buffalo Wings black, came out, black people rebelled against Hillary Clinton, and they didn't they didn't give a fuck. Yeah. That's they all were, they really was. No, black people were, were tired. They ate all the Hennessy Buffalo Wings, and they who sells Hennessy, to take Hennessy naps, Buffalo Wings? Bro. Say what? Who sells Hennessy Buffalo Wings? BBQs. Oh, there, say what? BBQs is only in New York, right? There was a lot of traveling. Listen, <laughs> people just traveling for the Madison Buffalo. 2016, <laughs> black voter turnout yeah. decreased significantly. Yeah. White voter turnout increased significantly. Here you go. You want to increase black voter turnout, put the boo- the voting booths in Popeyes. I feel like that no. is the best way no. if you want to get almost 100% vote, yeah. right? You put the ballots inside Popeyes. I mean, you do got to give people something they want. So it's like chicken sandwich after you vote. No matter who you vote for, you get chicken sandwich. But that's what Trump did in 2016. He what? gave the people racism. He was like, you know what? I know what you white people like. Y'all like racism. Y'all like bigotry. White people came out in record numbers and Dude. voted for them. <laughs> like, You're you not gotta, wrong. You got to give people something they want. That's it. Give Trump, them the Obama people they want. Obama gave people something they want. Hope. Hope. Change you can believe in. Right. That's what it was. That's why you had record turnouts in 08, 2012. Is racism our chicken sandwich? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, if it's that good, I gotta try it out, man. Yes. That Popeye's chicken yes. sandwich was fucking delicious. Absolutely. <laughs> Trump, yo, listen, I need to try out some racism, Trump, man. Trump tapped into America's real appetite. Let's be for real. Mm. America's real appetite is racism and bigotry. That's oh. what the country was built on. And you know the great thing about Obama, racism? Obama, Obama tapped into what people might have a taste for, might have a taste for some change. Might have a taste for some real justice. Might have a taste for some real equality. Might yeah. have a taste for some real freedom. That was a taste. But now, yeah, that's just an appetizer. The appetite, that's an appetizer. What the, what the you want to satiate me? Here you Give go. me some racism, there you bro. Go. There you go. And and that's what racism, sexism, that's America's appetite. Bro, that's, even homophobia, even homophobia, that's why I'm so that's not skinny it. to this day, probably, because I haven't been indulging in one of the most delicious things of whiteness is racism. racism. I've yeah. been out here eating black stuff my whole life. Including black women. What the hell is you, wrong with me? You wonder why you're not Yo, gaining no what's weight. What's wrong with me? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. Do I need to get me a white woman to build? <laughs> is that what I need to do, guys? Is there any white? But is anybody building with white women anymore? Say what? People still building with white women? <laughs> I think. You can't build with a white woman. You don't woman? feel sorry for politicians. Say what? You don't feel feel sorry for politicians. Why? When you see that women. <laughs> All jokes aside, when you when you see white politicians with their women, you don't ever feel sorry for them. Um, nah, because I feel like this: if you could fuck us over, you could fuck over your wife. And they do. That's why whenever you see them get caught up in a scandal, <laughs> right? And they fuck them like it's it, have it's you seen? understandable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you think that they ever give a speech where they're like, listen, I understand the struggle. Look what I've been with for the last 40 years. And look at the women, look, look, but about, look at the women they do it with, though. They're not even bad. Yeah, I know. They just better than they what they the, got in the White House. Bro, everything's relative. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is relative. That's all it is. Mm, 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 mm. Guys? No, You're not on the microphone, Taylor. You don't need to. And be. we don't need you to be. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's, listen, he didn't mean that as like a. Uh, she thought we were going to invite her. Yeah. <laughs> she did move off the wall, right? You saw her move off the wall. It's like someone's like, hey, you want to dance? No, 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 your friend. <laughs> yo, you want a drink? No, 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 not you. you girl standing behind you. Yo, 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 tap your friend. I want to talk to her. <laughs> this, yo, that's your piss Taylor, girl friend. off, yo. You can't buy her a drink unless you buy me a drink. <laughs> okay? Now I gotta buy both of y'all drinks just to tell you to get the fuck out of here. Go over there and drink your drink. <laughs> okay. Moral of the story is Popeyes is a good fucking chicken sandwich. I haven't had it yet. And Dave and Chappelle's special it. you should check out. Absolutely. I, listen, those are the best things moving this week. <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. You know, oh, oh, crowd, Come on, uh, baby. Come crowd on, work. Baby. What made you do that? Um. So... Uh, because Charlotte May is so amazing at introductions, uh, 
Love your support, brother. Uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Immediately just goes to text on his phone. <laughs> hey Schultz, is there something you want to promote? <laughs> um I I released a special as well, same day as, as Chappelle on YouTube. And uh it's called the Crowdwork Special. And it's just no material, all freestyled, all off the domes, 35 minutes. And I did it when I was down in DC. And um I did it for a specific reason. Sometimes reason? I don't like because I feel like there's too much thinking going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah. a fucking think piece. Because, because everybody, every, you know why? Talk to me. People are afraid of backlash. No, 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 no. So they want to have these perfectly crafted things to say so they don't get in trouble. That's why you can't believe Even nothing nobody's saying. The anymore. backlash is thinking. Look at your fucking Janelle Monet. It's like we have think pieces about Popeye's chicken. Like that's too much thinking. When you're thinking about yeah. Popeye's, like even. Any every you any blog or every article you go on Twitter, it's constant. Th- what does it really mean that Kamala Harris? What does it really mean that off white is it? What does it really mean? It's like we need to stop fucking thinking. Like every time I address something, <laughs> it, dude, for real. Every time I address something comedically, it's based on what I know the people need, but they might not need yet, right? Like that's what views was about. And then for this latest one, what I always subscribe to show don't tell. Right. So for the latest one, I was like, all right, I got the most diverse audience in comedy. That's without a doubt. Why don't we do a special? Right. And Alex came up with the idea of dropping it same day as Chappelle. And why, Alex? Why not? Why? Well, he had a great idea where he was like, he was like, you know, in music, people drop on the same day because when you're in an album listening mood, why not listen? I tell you the fundamental difference. Right, but let me let me explain okay, the point. Ahead, ahead. So, like, the point of it was, like, I got this super diverse audience, and everybody in the world is saying people can't take a joke, mm-hmm. people don't laugh, people are offended. Right? I am making fun of every race, religion, gender, to their face, and they are laughing at themselves. It dispels this myth that we are humorless people, that we're overly triggered, we're overly sensitive, because that is nonsense. I told you the idea I want you to do. I know. We'll get there. We'll get there. But like, for me, so what happens is, so it's just like, this is literally just a group of people from all different walks of life laughing at ourselves in front of other people. It, It really shows why comedy exists. It's like... It doesn't divide us. It actually brings us together. Everybody's taking it. The Asian guy's taking it. The black chicks are taking it. The Indian dude's taking it. It's just we are having the white chick with a fucking blazer is taking That's a clip I showed you, right? And it's like we are – this is what comedy is and well, this was for. Well, thanks for explaining that, Chance the Rapper, because I didn't get that from the special. I just thought you were just showing that you better off the top than everybody else. <laughs> I, I mean, that too. I didn't get that, too. <laughs> I didn't get that deep for meaning. I, I just thought you was, if Chance the Rapper put out his album The Big Day yeah. and he had a, on the front of it, he was holding a blank CD. Yeah. So I'm thinking the album is about his Big Day album release. Right. And you listen to it, and it's way too long. It's longer than Wendy Williams' legs. Right. And he's talking about <laughs> motherfucking being married and shit, which is shit that I can relate to, and right. being faithful because I'm a married man. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I don't want to hear 22 records of this shit. Yeah. Right? No, that's fine. But then when he's on Breakfast Club the other day, he's like, He explained well, it. It's about the big day, like my wedding. So why the fuck wasn't your wife on there with a wedding dress for the album cover? <laughs> but that's the beauty of, of the Breakfast Club. That's the beauty of podcasts. That's the beauty of you start that narrative. Like the people that are going to watch it, no matter what, are going to watch it. But my, my feeling was like, you know, Chappelle's the goat, you know what I'm saying? And if you want to be in the conversation of goats, then you have to be in a conversation with the goats. So I wanted to drop the same day because I want you to watch both of them back to back. And I want you to watch them. And I want you genuinely to ask, you know, like which one you For laugh comedy fans, You want comedy fans to do that. Yeah, because yeah, I, I yeah. want you to... I, I, I want. I, I don't want you to watch it a year later and then remember like, oh, well, how much did I laugh at Chappelle versus how much was Schultz? I want you to watch them right with each other and... Man, if you laugh the same, what an awesome honor to be in the same. Is that fair, though? Because I remember you said at the beginning of it, you said uh, you want me to go against Chappelle's well-crafted jokes. Because if I, if I was putting you and Chappelle up against each other, even though I know you're funny off the top, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want you to give me them slappers that you have really thought about. You might want, you might want to watch the special, bro. You put some of those slappers in there? No, it's off the top. No, I'm saying I'm just I'm not saying that. It's what not I'm funny, saying is, but I'm saying if you want to, if to compete, compete. Yeah, I would want you to compete with your best shit against his best shit. 
All I'll say is this. I'll just say, yo, watch them. Just see how much you laugh. Because you don't want somebody to be like, oh, it's funny for, it was, <clears throat> it's funny for some off the top shit. No, no. I just want to see how much you laugh. That's it. Just yeah. laugh. Just see how much you laugh. And then if you're laughing this much at this. Imagine how much you're laughing my crafted shit. Now we now we doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's it. it. That's all. But it's just one of those things where it's like, I felt there was too much thinking in comedy right now. And I wanted to just bring. I think too much overthinking. Whatever. Overthinking, thinking. I just wanted to bring back fun. It's yeah. like when you look at a guy like Duval, like what he's doing out there, like fun. he's bringing fun. All fun, baby. Right? Like, let's have fucking fun. Like, that's All why fun. we got into this shit in the first place because when we were hanging out with our friends, we were having fun and busting balls. When we were hanging out with our friends doing comedy, it was never like, this is my theory on, on blah, blah, blah. I it, do think the great comedians fucked that up, though. Meaning, like, Louis C.K., Chris Rock. Dave Chappelle. Not all of them are fun. Some of, Dave saying, is fun. But, some, but he's smart too, though. Like yeah. Dave makes you think. Like Dave, yeah. like, oh shit. I think some of those guys were so smart yeah. that all comedians kind of felt like, damn, I gotta be smart yeah. to be interesting. Yeah. But some of those guys are only smart. Like yeah. I, I like Louie is is a fucking amazing, prolific comedian, mm -hmm. but I never had fun around him. He's not fun. Well, you never jerked off with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, who would that his be more fun of, for? His type of fun was just for him. All right? <laughs> he didn't have the kind of fun that he could share with the family. Right? Hey, guys, you want to do a circle jerk around this young lady <laughs> real quick? That's, that's his idea of fun. Yo, right? but it is crazy. Like, like Rock is fun. Like, I've had some hangouts with Rock. He's fun. He's fun. Rock is fun. But Chappelle is fun. Like, really fun. Chappelle's like, Chappelle is, let's go get a drink. Let's smoke. Let's hang out all motherfucking night. All nights of four in the morning cracking jokes. Let's go find a club jokes. to go to D where the DJ's playing music. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to have my own little motherfucking party at a hotel. I'm going to buy out the motherfucking bar. Yeah. Everybody come over here. That's where we're going to be at. And that's that's the thing. That's all it is. It's like yeah. when we hang out, Alex and I are on the road with Mark, and, or I'm just yeah. hanging out with Akash, my comedian friends, even us on this podcast. That's a great point. It's fun. Like That's what no, needs to be that, brought back. That is, that is a great point because Dave, if you know anything about Dave Chappelle, He's always doing jam sessions somewhere. He's always having parties at his crib. He's always having parties when he's out of town. Like, if he's out of town doing a show, he's going to pull up somewhere. Like, I partied with Dave in South Africa. I partied with Dave here in New York. Like, he likes to have fun. He's a legend for fun. it. Yeah, he likes to have a good time. And in the midst of the good time, he's just like anybody else. He's drinking, he's smoking, and we talking about some smart shit that we might start laughing about some bullshit. Like, so, we just throwing ideas up against each other. I would not be surprised if if this special... The crowd work special I put out. If it gets, if it does as well as I think it can do, I would not be surprised if if we see more of the serious comics letting loose a little bit and being a little more vulnerable and just goofing around. Well, you know that's what Dave does after every show. You know what's so funny? There is an extra part on his special, and it's all crowd work, and it's a question answer with the crowd, yeah. right? We had no clue. Nobody had any clue. You can only access it if you watch you 25 minutes of credits. You can't even fast forward to credits. Or if you go to his show. Or if you go to a show, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like, how wild is that? How how wild is that, like, that I released the same day? And I didn't even find out about that shit until the next day. Mm -hmm. But how wild is that, like, being on the same wavelength that both of us had this theory, like, yeah, yeah, this needs to be out there. They need to show just, we need to show people that, yo, this is fun. There is funny in the bones. And look, I, I mean, think it's just get, cool. I, I think I think you have that muscle already, but I also think that, you know, having a podcast the past few years helped hone that muscle. 100%. And I think Dave has watched people do podcasts, and that's his version of H how do I do doing this? a podcast. How do I work it? How yeah. do I have that? Yeah. Because when I saw him in, um, when but I saw my, him two yeah, years ago, he did Mine's that. different than the question and answer. Mine is just, this is, I'm performing. This is a show. Hey, just it's 35 minutes. I'm performing as a show. If we, if someone brings up Epstein, now I'm going to talk about Epstein. Yeah. If somebody brings up this or I'm making fun of somebody, it's not like, it's not relaxed. Like, we're going, we're yeah, going yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. That, he, he, does, he, he, go, he goes in like that. Like, he did, like, two years ago, he did that when I saw him at Radio City. Yeah, yeah. And he did it and um. I forgot who he bought out with him on stage, but when I saw him at Broadway this year, yeah, yeah. he bought John Stewart out. And it was just him and John Stewart just so going cool. back and forth with the crowd for like another hour. So cool. Yeah. So I mean, like, yeah, I mean, listen, man, I think I think everybody is um everybody's feeding off each other's energies in different ways. Yeah, man. That's and the it's beautiful not, and it's thing. Not, and it's not in a stealing way. No, it's that's what people gotta understand. It's like if if someone else is talking about mental health, right? And if Oprah starts talking that. about, aren't you happy? Isn't yes. that your win? You should want that. 
You should absolutely. You can't be so that. selfish as to keep something to yourself. Like for not me, something like that. That's that's for everybody. If if the biggest comic in the world wants to go out there and take on cancel culture, that's a win for me if, too. If, if what you're trying to do, not me too. <laughs> not a win for me too. This is actually the opposite of that. It's very good against me too. All right, but but but, but uh, yo, there's a point in the in the crowds work special. Or somebody brings up something, I talk about my hemorrhoid. I didn't even notice I said this, right? I talk about my, I, I just say something quick, a little quick response about my hemorrhoid. And then I go, but hold on, right? And these people are listening to every word so much in the YouTube comments. They go, yo, you hear what he said? He said, butthole on. Like, he, like they thought that I was making a pun instead of butthold on. They were like, butthole. <laughs> I was like, y'all are paying attention, man. That is crazy. <laughs> no, what you said is absolutely true. And it made me think of something. What, what did you say before that? Uh, don't take on, don't be upset if somebody's taking on your. Boom. Yeah. I want to talk about Colin Kaepernick after we pay these bills. Ooh. Go. Ooh. Ben and Jerry's. I got you. <laughs> There's still a bit of summer left. Which means it's still prime ice cream season. That's right, man. I'll be honest with you. My favorite ice cream, hands down, chocolate fudge brownie. You know? And my favorite type of lady. Psych? Um, <laughs> Taylor Gang. What's up, Taylor Gang? <laughs> so, uh, I love it. I love chocolate fudge brownie. I also love oatmeal cookie chunk. That's my favorite ice cream. Both of them from Ben & Jerry's. Without a doubt, always been my favorites. Ben & Jerry's, the motherfucking legends, the goats of this ice cream gang. It's not even a question, okay? Ben & Jerry's. You go out there and you get some of that ice cream before summer's over because you know it slaps in July. It slaps in August. It slaps in September. Shit, it might even slap in October. And you lucky motherfuckers down there in California or Florida or Texas get to eat it all year. Love Ben & Jerry's. Truly the best. Without a doubt. You put that in the fridge. You put that in your freezer, rather. But what I like to I like to take it out a little bit, maybe even throw it in a microwave ten seconds, just get it a little loose. For I don't really? want to fi- I don't want to fight with my ice cream when it's too hard. I yeah, don't yeah, I don't fight like that either. Ice cream. No, I'm with you. I used to warm the spoon. You warm the spoon, I'm, and you it dip cuts it right in it, through. Cuts it right through that motherfucker. Absolutely. That's even be- how do you warm the spoon? Not in the microwave. It'll no, explode. you put hot water on it. Run hot water on it. Holy shit! Is that what the fucking scoopers are in in the ice cream places? I believe so. Mind blown. <laughs> Mind blown! This whole fucking time, <laughs> I had no clue why they keep the ice cream in that shitty water. Yeah, it's warm. But it's warm. It's Not the warm. ice cream, in the, the scoopers. Yeah. But it's warm so that it cuts, cuts through right the through, ice cream. That's it. That's it. Listen, treat yourself to your favorite flavor anywhere ice cream is sold. I'll find a new favorite at benjerry.com. That's B-E-N-J-E-R-R-Y dot com. Let's get back to the show. Okay, talk now, to me. You said something that's very important. You said if somebody... Mm-hmm is advancing your cause. Right? Charlamagne, you have to be careful here. You might be using logic. You might be using logic. If somebody is advancing your cause, right. you should not be upset. And if you are upset, what does that say about you and how you feel about that cause? That means that you may be a little misguided. Or, or maybe it's not as much about the cause as it is about you. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Listen, uh, I got mad love for Colin Kaepernick. Uh, I got mad love for Jay-Z. I'm tired of y'all bickering over this shit. You know what I'm saying? Not y'all two in particular, just people the community, the culture in general. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you have two people who I believe are taking two different courses of action right. to get the one common goal. Now, Colin Kaepernick took a knee for social justice, right? That's it. Period. He took a knee because of the the, the, the police brutality that was happening to unarmed black and brown people in this country. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. So if the cause is social justice and you have the NFL responding to that, right, even if they are keeping Cap out of the league for whatever reason, but if they are responding to that, if they're saying, look, we're going to start this impact change and we're going to pony up $100 million to start donating to, you know, different organizations that are doing the work. And we got guys like Malcolm Jenkins running it. And Colin, we want you to be a part of this. Colin, you're choosing not to. Then Jay-Z comes along, and Jay-Z's with Impact Change now, and they're trying to elevate that conversation, and they're using the NFL's resources to to empower these organizations that are doing the work in the community on behalf of all these various causes for black and brown people. Why would you be upset at that? 
Why would anybody be upset? Can I at ask that? you a question? Yes. It's a hundred million dollar donation, right? It's it's more now, actually. Okay. Yeah. Do you know how much the seven richest and most powerful countries in the world offered to donate to stop the fire in the Amazon? I think the most I saw was five. Twenty million dollars total. That's yeah. three million dollars a country. The NFL is willing to inject more money in black and brown communities or or I'm not exactly sure where this is. Well, what they're doing is um whatever the fuck. They're giving they're giving money to organizations that are doing the work on the ground in these different communities. Boom. So they're they're injecting money into the communities. Yeah. Uh five times more money than the world was willing to to inject in saving our oxygen source. They got another planet. They're like, man, nigga, rich Yo, niggas is going to Mars. They really out of here, bro. They give a fuck about They Earth. are really <laughs> out of here, bro. You better enjoy this shit while you they're can. Like Leo, you ain't made enough money to move. Bye. Bye. Bye, <laughs> dog. I'm, they are fucking gone. They, out. they don't give a fuck. They really don't care. Mm-hmm. They are out of here, dude. They are fucking they out of here. Shit. There's other planets that are uh, that 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 can hold human life. They are out of here, dog. They don't want to deal with the riffraff no more. They don't want to deal with us bitching, complaining. For what? They're over it. Hashtag this. They don't want to deal with this shit. It's a planet where there's some fucking avatars and they chilling. You know what I'm saying? Living their life, They got healthy Popeye's chicken sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the best space food. They really invented that. That's the first thing. They good. That's the first space food, bro. They out. Let me tell you something. If they put Popeye's chicken sandwiches on Mars... We going to make it up there, bro. Let me tell you something. We going to make it up to Mars. What bro. if we going to make it up to Mars? What if where 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 the babies of all the planets and everything that every other planet has done we're just now doing. What if there was already a Popeyes on Mars and that's why there's no life on Mars now? Because of the Popeyes chicken sandwich. <laughs> Have you thought about that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It, it could be a reason that there's no life on these planets no more. They did the fast food thing. Meanwhile, in a galaxy far, far, far away, it's a superior life form saying, oh, that galaxy will never learn about fast food. <laughs> yeah, it's another planet about to be dis- disintegrated because of fast fucking food. We had nuclear weapons, but it was a chicken sandwich oh, that took us chicken off. fucking sandwich, bro. Killed you. Game over. Have you felt the same since eating that sandwich? <laughs> Do you feel any different since last Friday? I think I've developed sickle cell. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. That shit might have fucked you so, up and you don't even realize it. What if it. white people started getting sickle cell after he and Popeye's? What if Popeye's chicken sandwich is the new small pox blanket? <laughs> small pops. <laughs> small pops chicken sandwiches. Small pops you know how chicken. stupid that'll look in history books in the future? Oh my God. Hell, we got rid of those niggas with Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Use blankets for the Native Americans. <laughs> for black people, we did the Popeye's chicken sandwich. That's the other thing, too, right? Hey, crack didn't work. Mass incarceration no, didn't work. They survived everything. The it's police didn't work. AIDS. <laughs> chicken sandwiches. Chicken sandwiches got them the fuck out of here. Let me tell you something. I was talking to somebody the other day, man. I'm not going to say their name because this shit was so stupid to me. Son, that's too funny. We was talking about fucking... We was talking about, they were talking about Popeyes and how Pope, Popeyes owes us money, which I think is the most asinine, what? illogical shit in the world. Wait, why did Popeyes owe the black community money? Yes. Okay. Because it's this whole thing about, uh, you know, we, we cost $60 million. I, 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 I'm not going to put all that on black people. Popeyes chicken sandwich was a, was a cultural phenomenon all across social media. We right? saw some whites. We saw That's some whites buying chicken them, sandwiches. Right? Yeah. So whatever. 60 something million dollars in advertisement generated for this chicken sandwich. Now people feel like Popeyes owes them something. Nobody told y'all to go buy that shit. Nobody told you to post it on your social media. Popeyes owes you absolutely nothing. Okay. And I don't even remember what the fuck I even started talking about that for. <laughs> All right. I don't know. But I just know that Popeyes owes you nothing. Yo, what if one of these Democratic senators that's just tired of being asked about reparations, the next time someone asks them, they're like, we gave you the fucking chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they was eating it too. Huh? By the way, I haven't seen a presidential candidate eat no Popeye's chicken sandwich. What does that tell you? That should make you know. All what does that side, tell you? That should make you think something. Because usually when there's some cultural shit going on and they want a panda, they go, go to, they pull up the Popeye's. Oh, you know whoever wins the next championship when they come to the White House, what's going to be served? Popeye's chicken sandwiches. And you can't even be mad at Donald Can Trump. Can you? No. Can you? That's, he's on brand. Uh, he's gave you Chick-fil-A. Uh, he's gave you McDonald's. Uh, he's gave you Burger King. Ooh. 
That's my hypertension. <laughs> <laughs> that Popeye chicken sandwich. That Popeye chicken sandwich is system. coming back. Ooh, what's that? Ah, oh god. I'm having chest pains. <laughs> ooh, ah. Why you feel like DJ Cool just now? Ooh, ah. Ooh, ooh ah, ah. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ooh, ah. Let me clear my, my throat. throat. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Listen, all I'm simply saying is, yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I'm just tired of talking about Popeye's chicken sandwiches, man. We tired this of thinking. Have... Stop. It's overthinking. I think people are doing everything. too much overthinking, yo. yo. It's like it's not that serious. How about like... this idea? This is some wild shit that okay. I thought. Okay. You know how you could patent something? You know, if you invent something, you could patent it? Yeah. How fucking stupid is that? Like, let's say you invent the zipper, right? And you patent it. And then let's say a guy who's never even heard of you in Turkey also invents a zipper. You could go to Turkey and then sue him. What's the problem with that? He had no, he can't close his jacket? I don't give a fuck. But the, like, the, yeah, think about it conceptually. It's an absurd notion. Is that Chick fil A? You know me. Oh, Sitting wow. The the wow. <laughs> you know me. Wow. Sitting here lying about being tired of chicken. She just walked in here with Hennessy and Chick Fil A. Hey! Wow, that was like the blackest thing I possibly yeah. could have done. No, it's yeah. not. It's life. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't. Give me my food, please. You greedy. How am I greedy? To eat? So yeah, you I'm, think I'm, you think I'm that if yourself, Joe. Charlie, you really what if problem. someone invents the wheel, right? Yes. And then another person invents the wheel in a completely different country. Never heard about that first person. They shouldn't be entitled to that invention of the wheel. Like it's just such a preposterous. I mean, listen, you can invent whatever you want. But, but why you do you get to it. own it? Like, I think trademark is bullshit. It's just some things rich rich people made up so that they could keep all the money for themselves. I don't see a problem with it. You don't want you don't got no jokes you want to trademark? Jokes are different. <laughs> why are they different? But here's the thing. Jokes are different. If you saw me do it, you're taking it. If you didn't see me do it, I can't hold you accountable for that. You know how many people I've seen uh, do jokes that are similar to mine? I'm not running up to them saying, oh, my God, you, you stole that from me. Maybe you thought of the same idea. If I know that you stole it to me, if, if you complimented me on the joke one show and then later I see you doing a joke, that's different. If the guy from Turkey came to your house and he was like, oh, you zip your jackets like that? Word, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. And then goes back to Turkey and makes it, that's stealing. But if the dude just wanted to close his fucking shirts and he thought of the same shit as you. I'm going to tell you why you should trademark everything. I think about all the money, cash money could have made off bling bling. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yo, the idea that you could trademark a word is stupid. I love it. First of all, bling bling. I don't think, nobody was thinking about that shit before they put in the rap records. Yeah, and but how do you profit off that? Like, when I say bling bling, I, yes, I that give shit you a was, penny? Yeah, that ended up in the dictionary. Like, you had yeah. Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous saying bling bling. Like, that's how they was describing diamonds after cash money. Fuck right. that shit. Trademark it. Why not? I just think it's absurd. It's like, like, it's another thing. Like, can you own, can you own oxygen? Like, why can you own land but not oxygen? I don't know, bro, but I know this Chick-fil-A fries, bro. <laughs> Man, this is like air right now, my nigga. I'm even telling you a lot. He said the N-word, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm loyal. He could have helped himself. I'm, I'm loyal to the soil, all right? Y'all can rush the Popeyes all y'all want. I've been eating Chick-fil-A my whole life, and I don't got diabetes, all right? Mm -hmm. I'll fuck with Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Why What's can't that? you own air? Yo, why can't you own the air? Like, we own land. You sell air. Say what? I've seen them sell air. Yeah. Bags that, of air on eBay. So, so you're selling bags of air. Like, why can't you sell it? Why, like, why are you allowed to sell it? Whose air is that? Mm -hmm. Is that my air? Did you take it from outside my apartment? If you could own water, you know, we could own pieces of water, right? You could own a lake. You could own a fucking river if it's on your property. You could, uh, America owns the water around America. That's why I like going to the Caribbean because in the Caribbean, none of the beaches are private. I don't give a fuck what's there. I don't give a fuck if it's the four season. Right. You know. There it, was one beach that was private. Where? Epstein's Island. <laughs> yeah, the whole island, though. Yeah, that has but beaches. But there had to be water around this island, right? Did you just ask if there was water around an island? <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to kill time while I eat these Chick-fil-A fries. Jesus I'm not, Christ. I'm not, I'm not, that was your question? You're a professional interviewer? I'm just trying. <laughs> Is I'm just there water right around now. an island? I'm going to track it right now. Say what? Now, it's going to be people that watch this shit and say... Oh, I knew I knew Chick Fil A was gonna get one of these niggas to get their back. Yeah, there's people that think I'm getting paid for this right now. <laughs> I mean, 
you did. It's part of the mid rolls. We have to talk no, about Chick Fil A. No, Stop no. acting, bro. No, you're not. Stop fronting, dog. You industry, lie. dog. It's all good. It's such it's, a hey, lie. you industry, dog. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Mm-hmm. 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 Every day, every day mm-hmm. he talks mm-hmm. about his skin mm-hmm. regimen, and mm-hmm. I don't eat this. And Doctor Natasha Sandy, now you scarfing down French fries from Chick Fil A. Come I on. Super, I have a super side salad. Can you never say three a, S's and again, please? <laughs> Can you never say three S's again? Okay? Because I have to wipe my face off. Do you have a supersized towel a super so I can clean my salad. fucking body after okay. that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you're not! Oh Bro! Mm. You, dude, that was like fellatio. <laughs> dude, that was intimate. He just put his mouth inside the fry canister thing. Or the fry, come. Come I'm on in. I'm loyal. Huh? Nah, I love... Nyla, up, Chick-fil-A or Popeyes? How the fuck you got a bra on? Chick-fil-A. Let me get some Chick-fil-A. Okay, go ahead. Take it. I just want some fries. He, he ate all the fries. Nah, didn't it? Two other fries in here. Oh, that's an OD. I don't know who else food this Chick-fil-A is. Chick-fil-A all day. Popeyes is nasty. Thank you. Popeyes, Thank Popeyes you. is great for sides. Thank you. Nah, nah, nah. No, you need to stop. you're right. Nah, you need you to stop, yo. Yeah, you need to stop. Why don't you talk to the microphone, Nyla? Oh. Is that on? Dwayne, is that one on? Yeah. What do you think about it? I tried the chicken sandwich. I just thought it was overrated. Chick Fil A will never be defeated when it comes to it. Man, so, get, know, what y'all know about Chick-fil-A chicken? The Chick Fil A chicken sandwich kind of has like that sweet taste to it. Mm. Like it's something about it. like the the Popeyes one was like it tastes like a chicken breast on bread. Mm. Really, it was like crunchy. Like they didn't do nothing different. Where at Chick Fil A, you got options. You see what Charlamagne's eating right now? Grilled. Hold it up real quick. Grilled it's, chicken it's, nuggets. It's grilled. You know what I'm saying? It's the healthier option. There is no healthy option at Popeyes. So you Popeyes. upset because Popeyes isn't healthy? No, I'm not upset. I'm just how saying, you feel like, about ice cream? No, the oh the competition that they tried to create just wasn't there. That's it. I agree. Popeyes social, bodied them. No, no, no. Social media just hyped it. We got to stop allowing social media to gas shit. Yo, I agree. Because it's like it was never that serious. You really tried it. I tried it. I had it twice when they brought it up here, and then we ate it again. Like, oh, so you had dinner. another one? Yeah, I had to confirm. Oh. I had to confirm. You oh. know what I'm saying? Okay. That this is what okay. it is. I'm just saying, it kind of seems like you like that chicken sandwich. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, if it wasn't that, that good, you wouldn't have run it back. You, said what, you see what you said on the back of this? Soggy on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Let's, say, let's get to Let's get to the bottom of this. Yo, that's what the gay dude says on Sundays. <laughs> well, guess what? Oh. They got to do something to cater for the gay community. All right? <laughs> all right? Take the layout to do something for the LGBT community. What if community? that's why they take Sunday off? Just a butt fuck. <laughs> Yeah, what is happening? Right? They're like, you think we're gay? What do you think we doing on Sundays? <laughs> we put the fill in fillet. By the way, <laughs> that would be the illest marketing scheme ever. That's it, hey, bro. I'm running my business. And you know, you know why we close on Sundays? Mm-hmm. Sodomy. That's it. <laughs> it's Sodomy Sundays at the Chick-fil-A Ranch. All right. Yeah. Y'all, 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 y'all are dragging it. <laughs> the disrespect is crazy. I why still, is it disrespectful? I got to walk away. Gay guys can't I mean, like butt. I'm going to eat this french fry. If we like chicken sandwiches, they could like butt. You know? A, 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 a breast, the, the sandwich that Popeye's made off is just the butt of the chicken anyway. Mm. Really? Yeah. No. Oh. You ain't know that? Mm-mm. No, really? chickens don't. no bones in it. Chickens don't have butt, bro. Hmm? Chickens yeah. don't have butts. Chickens absolutely have butt. No, they just got a hole. Uh, so why do you think people say, guess what? I think chicken butt. <laughs> <laughs> no, the butt, it's like because a long Because it rhymes, <laughs> though. They, <have> <laughs> they just got, no, it's just flat. <laughs> They don't have butts. Do you think a chicken got an ass on it? I don't know, but if they did, I would eat it. Because there's not a part of the chicken <laughs> that is not tasty, bro. That really? is disgusting. The gizzards, the feet, the breasts. Yo, I'm going to be honest with you guys. The legs. I didn't realize how much black people love chicken until this week, bro. <laughs> the gizzards. And just hearing you talk, I thought it was a gross stereotype, but hearing you talk about a chicken in the way that you just did, bro... Like, I know you're married, you love your wife and everything. I haven't heard you speak about your wife like that, bro. Oh, like that. Listen, man. Don't do that. <laughs> I love every part of the chicken. <laughs> the gizzards. The gizzards. You never had gizzards? <laughs> no. Oh, I got to get you some gizzards. <laughs> KFC sells gizzards. First you sitting there saying ill, and you from Philly. What's that supposed to mean? If you suck the nigga from Philly's dick, you can't say ill about <laughs> anything you put in your mouth. <laughs> Well, All right. <laughs> well, Charlotte, Philly's not that south. Exactly. It's not. Yeah, it, I th- it is kind no, of. No, Philly is not. Compared when, to New York? The Win Dixie line is Maryland down. The what? No, because they got two. I mean, no, the, Mason, no, no, the, the Mason Dixon, Dixon, Dixon line. But, I said the Win Dixie line. But before there was Win Dixie a chicken shop or something no, like that? Win Dixie's a grocery store in the south. Oh. Before okay. Chick- you don't know what a Win Dixie is? <laughs> That's not you don't know what the Mason Dixon line is? <laughs> before Chick fil A's were everywhere, the closest you get one is in Philly. So to me, that's the, that's when it starts getting stubborn. Mm. 
Chick Fil A. Yeah, because yeah. it's Philly. It ain't Philly on the border or what? Delaware or Virginia? Jersey. Delaware. Delaware. Mm. Would you consider Delaware the South? No, no. It's not. Anything below really? the Mason Dixon line? It's Maryland down. Virginia. Yeah. yeah, Maryland, Virginia. Oh, okay, West okay, Virginia, yeah, okay. Carolina. Got you, got you, got you, got you. <laughs> Pay some bills. No, let's go back to the fact that he don't know what a Win Dixie is. Nah, but what is a Win Dixie? I know somebody fries about to get fucked up if they don't come in here and get them. Who, <laughs> else, who else food is that? I mean, I'll cash up them. Win Dixie is a grocery store like Publix, Piggly Wigglies. They are in the South. Ah, Food Lion. Yeah, we never had those in New York. Like these big, I guess maybe Dagostinos or something like that. Why was only a Jersey thing? No, it's Pathmark, yes, it Pathmark, maybe we had one. The only people that fuck with Wawa is New Jersey. Uh, Philly definitely fucks with Wawa. We have Wawa. Now. Philly, a.k.a. Jersey. I love Wawa- Wawa's. Oh, when that's what we were talking Philly? about. We are talking about Kaepernick. Shit. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> How the fuck did we how get here? You know how we got here? Someone chicken. said chicken and you went crazy. Someone <laughs> <laughs> fucking lost his goddamn mind. Bro, you were sounding like Bubba Gump from the, the fuck Forrest Gump or whatever. <laughs> Popeye chicken, KFC oh, chicken, <laughs> saute chicken, no, gizzards, right. chicken You're feet, right. chicken arms, You're chicken right. butt. You're right. Okay. Hold on. So you want to reset and then come back and really stay on focus with Kaepernick? Yeah, let's take a knee. All right, let's take, let's a, take a knee on chicken. <laughs> let's just take a knee on chicken and we get right back to it. Let me talk to you about my man Ray J, man. All right. Uh, and Raycon, okay? Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you need to check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon, all right? Raycon! I, I love, listen, I love Raycon wireless earbuds um, simply because Ray J gave me a few of them a while ago. And I used them. Especially when I work out, like Ray, Raycon earbuds, they air stay buds. in. They actually stay in your ears, unlike all these other wireless yeah, earbuds they, that just fall the fuck you know out. What? They don't slip out when you're working out because when my ears be sweating, they don't slip out. Yeah, that's absolutely it. right. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing. All right, the company was actually co-founded by Ray J. My guy. And celebrities like Snoop Dogg are obsessed with it, okay? Raycon's E50 wireless earbuds have totally changed the game. They're so comfortable and so easy to take anywhere. Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems. Who has had a better life than Ray J, man? I mean, Ray J used to be considered Brandy's brother. Now he's a, 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 tycoon. a tycoon, a tech tycoon. All right, Raycon offers their wireless earbuds for everyone in a range of fun colors and at an unbeatable price. Go to buyraycon.com slash brilliant idiots to get 20% off your order. That's buyraycon.com slash brilliant idiots for 20% off Raycon wireless earbuds. If you've been eyeing a pair, now is the time to get an amazing deal. One more time, buyraycon.com slash brilliant idiots. Now, back to what you said. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. If you care about an issue, you shouldn't care about who is elevating said issue. Mm. There is no reason for people to not be rooting for what Jay-Z is attempting to do with the NFL to work. Doug, if you can root for Trump when he gets people out of prison or whatever, when he does prison reform shit. They don't root for that. But there are people that can separate their hatred of his policies you and him as the be man. Able to. Yes. And I think there are people that can. Yeah. And, and they can go, well, this one thing is good. We should support that. I'm happy that dude got out. I'm or happy he got, got out. out. Yeah. If you can do that with the person you hate the most, but can't do that with Jay-Z, I, I'm just confused. I'm going to tell you why it's even more logically inconsistent than that. Yeah. We want Colin Kaepernick to be back in the league. We salute Eric Reed and Kenny Stills and all of those brothers for still playing in the league right. and protesting. Right. So if it's okay for them to be in the league, right. why is it wrong for Jay-Z to work with the league? What is the difference? Like, it's literally the most logically inconsistent shit in the world to me. Now, if everybody wants to be on some fuck NFL shit, but right. well, we just say fuck the NFL, we're boycotting, they did Colin dirty, we not going to watch it no more until he gets a job. To me, that's a whole different boycott than what the taking the knee stood for. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> wax is... <laughs> wax is... Now wax, you're distracted by chicken? No. Come on. Wax, Come on, white man. Stay wax focused. Wax is the most calm person that I've ever met. Why? He opened a Chick-fil-A bag and noticed that there was less Chick-fil-A than there should have been in there. <laughs> and he is having to fucking... He that's almost put on his was. baseball gloves. Uh, he literally... He was like, somebody need to get fucked up no, over I thought, this. I thought about that. I thought about that when I opened mine. Somebody <laughs> ate out of the top of every single fry. Taylor, no, I didn't get it. I think it was DoorDash. 
Yeah. The DoorDash guy. <laughs> yeah, they ate. I can tell they ate out of the top of every single fry. Really? I can absolutely tell. Who oh, I got a cash app? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's pages. Don't worry about it. That's reparations. Love you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't owe her anything. Love pages. Listen, much love. listen. But if you don't, what if black people never had to pay for chicken for the rest of your lives? That's not worth it. No, and it would need to be anyway. non-GMO not chicken. Not, yeah. <laughs> that's not all that it shit it's organic, organic and then it's it on needs the to table. be organic. I want something else. That's why I think the KFC Beyond Chicken <laughs> Meat is bullshit. Well, the idea with that oh, is eventually yeah. we won't be eating animals. Yeah. It's bullshit. You can't tell people you don't want them to eat genetically modified shit and then give them something genetically modified. Oh, no, I thought it's not. It's plant-based. It's plant-based. They're, chickens aren't made of plants. It's not chicken. Chickens yeah, are no, not so growing out of the ground. It's like they're vegan <laughs> like, You don't plant no. seeds and grow chickens. I can it's, see how passionate you are about this chicken project. But, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> son, this is <laughs> shocking, dude. I just, <laughs> So you, you don't think this chicken is genetically modified? They're you, making this shit. Hey, you don't vegan, have to you don't have to raise your voice, vegan bro. Vegan what? <laughs> you know, you know like, what this guy's getting real upset about chicken. <laughs> say what? Right. Every time we try to talk about Colin that Kaepernick, chicken, man. we say chicken, chicken and been we distracting come us back. all goddamn week, man. <laughs> now you understand why the Epstein shit we're not talking about it? You understand it. You understand it. What if Epstein hung himself? Can, can I ask you something? Listen, how, come how, out. How you kill a chicken? What do you do to it? You pop his neck. <laughs> what if <laughs> Epstein? What if Epstein? <laughs> Let's go, man. What if Epstein you hung himself because he knew where this chicken conversation was going and he didn't want to be a part of it the same way I don't want to be a part of it now. Oh. I'm sick of it. No, he hung I'm himself because well, he was obviously killed, but he was killed and then covered up with this chicken. That's all you have to, it's just one chicken sandwich, bro. It's one chicken sandwich. And I'll be honest with you, you guys shouldn't have fell for the chicken sandwich because if you didn't fall for the chicken sandwich, you would have got something even better. What? Maybe the whole chicken. Maybe it was going to be a, another <laughs> chicken America involved. America fell for the chicken sandwich, bro. America fell, but we fell for the first offer. You should. We should have said no deal and then see what you really come back with. They could have reinvented. Who was the first person to say this chicken sandwich was so fire? Let's think about that. Why don't we think about that? Yeah, like who was the first? Like where did this chicken? Who got the most to lose with Epstein? So fire. Who got the most to lose with Epstein? Clinton hmm. or Trump? I wonder who. I wonder. I, I wonder who <laughs> was talking about this pap hat mm. chicken sandwich. <laughs> You mm. seen the fat lady? Yo, Alex showed me this video of this fat chick talking about how she spends all her money on food. Did you see this one? I'm blaming it on Trump. I blame it on social media. The reason I blame it on Trump is because Trump loves fast food. So if there's anybody good, who would come up with this fast food, this fast food uh, scheme to distract yeah. us, it would be Donald Trump. Michelle Obama would never. Michelle Obama might be cooking the chicken. That's why that's just so fire. <laughs> Yo, yeah, <laughs> would serious. never. You don't think so? No. What? She was all about health. Yeah, she want to work out and all that kind of shit. She yeah. cheated with the Popeye chicken sandwich, bro. You haven't? Nope. You didn't? Mm -mm. You tried to buy it the other day when we bought it. I didn't buy it. Didn't. My wife told me no. He My wife told me I couldn't have it. Oh. Your mind is telling you no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm cool. But your body. Mm -hmm. I'm cool. It's telling me yeah. I'm cool. But back to y'all first point that y'all keep getting on topic what? about at about Kaepernick. Oh. Right. And how. You know if um, you spell Kaepernick backwards as chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that um, it's kind of like with Kim Kardashian and you, her bro. like freeing people, like that whole TV show she's doing yeah. and the social media justice thing, and it's just like we feel like Kim Kardashian appropriates black culture, but now she's out here freeing people. How do we feel about that? Like I personally, I don't know who you want to say. You should be happy. No, no, I am happy yeah. now. But at first, it was just like, well, why is she doing this? She's just doing it. Like, I was like one of the... We question people's motives for why they do things exactly. all the time. Which Nothing is wrong so with weird questioning. to me. Nothing wrong with questioning, but don't question yourself out of success. Nothing wrong no, with questioning themselves out of the job. No, but I'm happy she's doing it because it needs to get done. So by yeah. all means, if she's the one who has to do it, then she has to do it. And that's how I feel about Jay-Z, too. Like, if Jay-Z has the strength to sit in the room and do that and be like do the game changer then fucking thank God for doing it what's the That's problem it. there's yeah. no problem like there should be no problem and by the way you gotta give things a beat right give it a moment let's revisit this conversation in a year two years there's right. no need to jump to an immediate reaction and be like he's, he's a sellout he took the money yeah. and ran like <laughs> what happened <laughs> <laughs> Somebody ate your food? 
<laughs> Damn, wait, wait, son. Wait, my last comment is that Raspity album is amazing. I tried to tell you. Hold on. Yo. <laughs> hey, once again. Yo, chicken. Pace, why you, by the way, why you by let the way, them abuse chicken. you, bro? That's a white person. Pace, that's a sellout. Chicken Pace distracted a sellout everybody. White, bro. Pays a real white you sellout, got, you bro. You've been getting distracted by chicken the whole podcast. Maybe that was my whole plan with y'all. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Your food is gone? And all of it is gone. Oh, wax ate those. No, I got wax fries, meat fries, you fries. I ate them. Wax ate them because there was. I don't What's know. What's her what name? Who? Nyla. Nyla? Yeah. I'm snitching. Did Nyla eat your fries? <laughs> what did you get? Just fries. All you got was fries? Yo, you what gotta you stop get getting bullied, fries? man. That's what that white guilt does to you, Paige. You gotta stand up for yourself. No. You know what I mean? You gotta stand up for yourself. Yo, look at her sitting there salty like a cracker. <laughs> 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 by the way, you know, by, the way, my motherfucking by the way, nobody's yeah. going to take a white person getting mad over chicken serious. <laughs> All right. She about to cry. By the, oh, you know what, though? I take that back. It's not chicken. It's potatoes. Irish. Yo. Her last name is O'Donnell. O'Donnell. It's the potatoes. Come on, yo. Don't I fuck. Forget. That's, Irish Irish people that's white people's chicken. It's potatoes. Serious. It's yeah. potatoes. <laughs> white people's white chicken, people chicken is definitely potatoes. potatoes. You can't and be taking by the way, potatoes. And those were fried potatoes because they were French fries. Yeah. <laughs> that's white people. White people's fried chicken is French fries. Fried fucking potatoes. <laughs> that's what the fuck it is. Motherfucking Irish, god damn it. She lost her fucking mind over them fried potatoes just It now. wasn't that big a deal when you're eating the chicken. But when you went for the taters, <laughs> <laughs> that was too far. It was too damn far. That's something I'll take an E for, Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> Paige just quit oh, off a half a fucking potatoes. Paige quit <laughs> off them fried potatoes, man. You must not know how serious Irish people take their goddamn Son. potatoes, bro. Okay? Son. Well, that's their livelihood, goddamn. That's their livelihood, bro. They stopped making potatoes. There was a potato famine, and they all starved to death. Really? Yeah, and the craziest thing about it is Dennis Leary had a joke about it. He goes, they starve to death, and they live on an island. It's just like fish. Mm. Just put a rod in the water and you can easily feed yourself. But yeah. they were so in love with potatoes that they, that was the only thing that they would eat. That's crazy because Irish people ain't really chunky like that. Say like what? You would think potatoes put a lot of weight on you. Nah. Potatoes are from the earth, bro. Who, who'd you say is a little chunky, Taylor? Don't do that. Don't do that. What? I said some Irish people are chunky. <laughs> Yo, are you saying Paige is fat? Wow. wow. Yo, that's yeah. fucked up. That is bro. really crazy. How you gonna yo. take her French fries? I didn't take That's you why you took her fries? I took one. You did take You one took her fries because you're getting too chunky? One. You Damn, think she's getting son. too chunky? Yo, this is crazy. Y'all why are girls so mean to each other, bro? Why y'all body shame each other so much? You didn't? I didn't. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Damn, bro. Yo, let's talk about Colin Chicken. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. I think it's going to be hard to talk about Colin. <laughs> Colin Chicken. With all this chicken going around. <laughs> Colin Chicken. <laughs> Listen, my point is simple. I just think it's very logically... My point is simple. I just think it's very logically inconsistent <laughs> yeah. for people to be mad at Jay-Z working for the NFL when we have people actively working in the NFL. Like, there was no black people working in the NFL, yeah. and black people were boycotting the NFL together, all together, meaning no players were playing, no black people were watching. I would totally understand. Question. Are there any black-owned uh, fast food restaurants, chicken-related? I mean this sincerely. I mean, people that own Popeye's. It's black people that own Popeye's. It, Popeyes black owned? <clears throat> not the not the founders of it, but there are Popeyes franchises. No, no, I'm talking owned by about black people. In fact, the, the, the source, the, the one that does the best, yeah, that like that grosses the most in the world, yeah. is owned by a black man. Popeyes. That's great, but I'm talking about owning the source. Like we, you know, we talk about black business and supporting black business and all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, why don't you just support the businesses that you already support the most? It's like if y'all love chicken so much, you love chicken sandwiches. Why don't you just start a fast food chain that chicken like? It, like, I know that Rick Ross owns a few wing stops, but does he own Wingstop? No. That's what y'all need to get into. If you already know that you like chicken sandwiches, start the chicken sandwich business. Everybody likes chicken sandwiches. I don't know. Listen, I, I keep I said this before because somebody said to me earlier earlier this week, they were yeah. like, 
Well, Popeyes is doing his cultural appropriation. That was one of my points earlier that I lost. So if you hear me say, I forgot the fuck I was going to say. This is the second part of it that I yeah. just remembered. Somebody said, yeah, uh, Popeyes is cultural appropriation. I'm like, why the cultural appropriation? Uh-huh. Like, chicken is not something that's just regulated to black people. And by the way, if yeah. you think it's cultural appropriation, you can't get mad when everybody, whenever somebody uses it as a stereotype against us then. Oh, that stereotype is solidified now. <laughs> That's in the books. Watermelon is still up in the air. We don't know. Until Chick-fil-A comes out with that watermelon milkshake next summer Son, if and they takes drop back their fucking crown. Watermelon lemonade? Watermelon lemonade could if be fire. If you drop watermelon lemonade. Watermelon lemonade could be fire. You don't like watermelon at all. Is that a Philadelphia thing? No. It is I just don't like the fruit. All it has like... Got you, got you, got you. I'm not a fan of watermelon. Have you ever had a peach milkshake from Chick-fil-A? No, I have not. Peach cheek, peach milkshakes from Chick Fil A are mm. amazing. Okay. Like if I was, if it's it's one of the few things I will risk being lactose intolerant. One of the few yeah, times I put dairy in my Take body. Your shots. It makes Take me your break shots. out. It makes me shit crazy. But worth would, it. It's worth it for that peach milkshake from yeah. Chick Fil A. Vale la pena. That's the saying Imagine in Spanish. Imagine somebody makes a watermelon <sighs> Charmin. milkshake. Charming. This is this is this is the problem. Is you're going to come up with these ideas that are billion dollar ideas, and you're not going to get you're not going to get the revenue from it. How do you Some, not already have a trademark? And I'm just throwing it out there so somebody breaks that trade breaks market that and you got to collect that money. And I just wait a year and be like, yo, uh, oh, by the way. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. By the way, while you're out here drinking your little oh. green and red milkshake, okay, that tastes like watermelon, uh. all right? That's uh. me. All right? You don't believe it? Look it up in the books. And you'll see a black man with a big old smile. And a watermelon. <laughs> and, and a milk. That's Mickey. <laughs> all right? I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> what? God, it must be so much fun to have cultural foods, man. I have no cultural chicken food. Chicken is not a cultural food. Let me ask America you a question. America likes chicken. Let me ask you a question, right? Why do you just call them hens? <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Wait a minute. Is that what black people mean when they're like, let's throw them hands? No. <laughs> <laughs> let's throw them hands. <laughs> Throwing a bunch of raw fucking rotisserie chickens at each other. It's like, y'all love chickens so much that you fight with chickens? Let's throw them hens. Damn, y'all out right. here throwing hens? Hennessy. Hennessy. <laughs> oh my God, guys. This is crazy. Hennessy, the chicken of cognac. <laughs> not know i did not know this shut up man <laughs> i did not know i'm still learning bro listen listen Whoa. i did not know dude i did not know charlemagne i did not know but bro. Don't, y'all call white, y'all call chickens hens right i don't know that you never heard the term hen i've heard of a cornish game hen boom that's like a baby chicken boom Everybody loves chicken. I heard that black people don't like the the baby chickens, though. I don't even know what baby chickens look like. It's a Cornish game hen. I think it's a, just a smaller chicken. It's like a baby chicken. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Philly got chicken peats. Yeah, it's really good, actually. But it's no chicken. It's what like the? Chicken peats is chicken. No, it's like it's more seafood and fries. We did go for the fries. The, ba- the, the logo is a chicken, Taylor? I never had chicken over there. Chicken Pete's is a chicken spot. They serve chicken and <laughs> french fries, hold on, hold on. man. There's this place them. named Chicken Pete's, and did you just try to say that it sells mostly seafood? Yeah, they do. Wow. So you're saying black people <laughs> love chicken so much they're naming their seafood restaurants <laughs> after chicken? <laughs> okay, that's my fault. I never had chicken over there. <laughs> it's called Chickies and Pete's. Right? Yeah. Oh, she's right. Ha! What? It is delicious seafood and pub grub. Exactly. Oh, and it's crab not chicken fries. and pizza. It's chickies and pizza. Yeah, Chicky and pizza. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Taylor. I apologize. We're I apologize. Sorry. You, the one time you actually sounded smart on the podcast. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we apologize. Finally. Dude, it, I'm I'm like blown away by this whole chicken conversation, man. I'm yeah, learning a lot. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm over it. Uh, yeah. Um, I think yeah. we... Is there anything else that you'd like to bring up about chickens or while we're on the topic, just while we're here? Um, it's Labor Day weekend. This weekend? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be grilling. Yeah. Um, burgers, 
Hot dogs. Yeah. Chicken. Chicken. I'm sure. You know, now I'm just throwing this out there. It doesn't necessarily have to be, have to be factual or true, but like when you imagine like a white girl saying something in like a porno, Mm -hmm. right? Like when she's talking to a black guy, like what does she say? What is the line that comes to you? Give me that big black cock. I'm sorry, that what? <laughs> big black up. cock. Because everybody loves chicken. Duh. White women love chicken so much that they call dicks cocks. <laughs> White women are the only people in America who call penises cocks. I think they only call that around black people. Well, you got to have a certain size dick to have a cock. <laughs> Is it bigger or smaller? Bigger. Yeah. Really? You wouldn't call a little piece of meat a cock. You know what I'm saying? So big dicks are cocks. Cocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Ask the Idiot, Taylor. <laughs> Christopher Wallace says, what is what change? What has changed most about the entertainment industry for better and worse since you started? <sighs> what has changed most about the industry since I started? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's completely falling apart. It's, it's <laughs> like when, when I started uh, in entertainment, there was... You know, television was the only outlet. I mean, obviously radio as well, but like television was the only, you know, real outlet for video. And um, it was a closed circuit. It was like owning a basketball team. You know, it's like if you weren't on one of the teams, you couldn't play in the NBA. Simple as that. Didn't matter if you like playing basketball. They had to allow you to play on it. And then the Internet comes out and then you basically can have your own team. You create your own team and you play against everybody else. And, you know, that's that's really what we've learned is that like creatives – are more valuable than executives because what me, Alex and Mark did with my special in a day, I think it got like 350,000, 325,000 or something views in a day. Like that's triple what a comedy central special gets in a day. Creatives are more important than executives now simply because creatives don't have to wait on executives to create. That's it. But we were always the the powerful source. They just were holding court because they had Absolutely. the key. So we need to act like, sir, can I have the key so I could go in and make some shit? And they're like, oh, I don't know if we want. But now we don't have to. So nope. the whole thing is falling apart. And then I would say that uh, we have a very interesting next five years in in entertainment. I think what's happening now is the streaming wars are about to begin. So Ain't all, no war, be. Say what? Ain't no war, be. There will be wars. Ain't no war, be. Okay, maybe no war, but whatever. You're I can tell have, you who got the nuke. Yeah, Disney, obviously. Disney Plus got the nuke. Without a doubt. But it's like you're going to have Disney, NBC Universal, Netflix, uh, Warner, which is also the HBO one. And I think there might be one other one. I mean, Hulu is part of Disney. And Time Warner HBO will prosper. Yep. Because they got catalog. And they're also last to the market. So they're going to wait to see what everybody does wrong and what everyone does right. And then they're going to replicate that. And they'll probably have some new advancements. And they also have shows that we're already in. Into. Catalog. Also, also catalog. Not, not catalog is what is going. Catalog is what. You got to look at catalog. Like, but catalog doesn't get you to sign up. New shit gets you to sign up. Catalog satisfies you while you're signed up. Exactly. Yeah. So Disney is going to kill because they got all of these new shows they're announcing. All the, right. all the Marvel shit. I'm in. As a Marvel head, it's I'm it. in. Talk. Now think about it like this. Think about all the money Marvel movies make. Billions of dollars. Correct. Everybody that's a Marvel head Correct. is going to sign up for Disney+. Plus. Yep. Then you're going to have the catalog of all the Disney shows. Yep. And I think they got Hulu, if I'm not mistaken, and yep. Fox and all that. Like yep. You got catalog, catalog, it's catalog. The Disney, they're going to shut everything down in the long run. Yep. Time Warner, HBO... Depending on what else they bring to the table, they should kill just based off catalog. Sopranos, The Wire. You're also forgetting. True Blood. So, Warner includes... CNN. What else? Turner. Turner, yeah. What does Turner have? Sports. There we go. Yeah. That is the game changer in streaming. When Disney... Which owns ESPN said they're coming out. I'm like, oh, you're good. We could watch games. I gotta have that one because Netflix, y'all ain't got shit. Disney Your got shows ESPN. suck. Do you know what I mean? You, it's it's too much that there's no organization. But Disney, I could watch my Sports Center if I want. I could watch my basketball if I want. I could watch my football if I want. I'm golden. When t- and when Warner came out and I was like, oh, they got HBO. That's good. And then I realized they had Turner. I was like, wait, a minute, I could watch Inside the NBA on TNT on a streaming service. Let's go. I agree with you, but the only reason, like for me, Turner is seasonal. When it comes to sports, I don't watch baseball. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, no, no, if I'm not, no, nah, the Braves, the Braves used to come on Turner back in the day. Yeah. But 
I watch Inside the NBA. I don't I don't go to them for nothing else. Sure. But ESPN is 24-7, 365, even when it's the off-season and ain't shit else but on. But check it. Your cable package and my cable package right now already over $100. If we get the Disney package for 14 and the the Warner package for 10 that's $24 for all the shit I want to see. I just saved $75. I'm cool with that, yo. You give me Disney, you give me Netflix, you give me Warner, I'm good. That's it. That So, so the next five years, you have the streaming battles where we're at, the dust settles, we'll see where everybody is, right? And then after that- It'll be three left standing just like in, in, in network TV. Boom. So three left standing, and then after that, someone's going to come along and bundle all those three, and we're right back where we were in the first place at cable. We'll take a big check to bundle all those yeah, three, Yeah, but baby. checks are out there. There's always checks. Yeah, that's I don't know who can buy that. Disney, Time Warner. It's not about buy. What they'll do is offer, right? So it's like Time Warner offered all these channels. They didn't own ESPN. They didn't own Disney. They just offered the channels. So when I get a Time Warner or a Spectrum thing, I get NBC, but I also get HBO. I get these things. They're just saying, here you go. Oh, all this. I wonder this, how Time Warner Cable is going to change now. Oh, it, Time Warner Cable is just going to be about internet, right? They're just like, hey, we provide you with the internet so you can get this other shit. They've shifted their business plan. So all they want to do is going to be the provider because if you want to get Disney Plus and you don't want to get Time Warner shit, they don't care because you can still got to pay Time Warner to get the cable to get the Disney. Mm. So what's going to happen over the next five years is going to be really interesting. Um, Hey, Taylor, open up your phone. Yeah, I think the industry, I think the industry is just going to Continue to get better simply because nobody has to wait on no fucking body. This is a good one. Schultz's rise in unsafe comedy may have given credence to a goat like Dave Chappelle to be flagrant again. But my question is, what other comedy goats do you see returning with this energy? Do you think Eddie will be raw again? Will Lewis get a special because of it? I don't think I don't think Chappelle was ever flagrant in his stand up, though. I think he was more flagrant on the sketch show. No, nah, he was flagrant in stand up. How old is 15 really? was one of his most popular jokes. I mean, he was he had he had flagrancy, but he was always more cartoonish. Yeah. Like what Chappelle would do is like devise a a kind of cartoon or a sketch, if you will, to execute a serious joke. Like when he was talking about the hood and he was talking about I saw a baby selling weed on a corner or something like that. Uh-huh. Remember? And that's his way of going, hey, this is the reality of the hood, but I'm gonna make it kind of fun and and, and silly so that you can take in the message of it. Right. So now I think this is the first time we're seeing Chappelle say literally how he feels about things that are going on instead of devising like a, a, a cartoonish story arc around it. Well, no, he still has the cartoonish story arc. It just like I said earlier, it just comes. It just sounds like it's personal. It, it seems it seems these, these things are things yeah. that seem like they really happened to him in his real They're life. real instead of in the past. It might be like it, these a are bit. fabricated bits yeah. to say a real point. Yeah. Um. That's all I see, Taylor. Do one more. What? There is no more, Taylor gang. Taylor, there are no more. Guys, I'm going on vacation. Um, It's Labor Day weekend. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this week's of the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Um, Slight-itis. (laughs) <laughs> slight slight itis cause of Chick-fil-A I was hungry I was starving I hadn't ate all day I didn't know that it was gonna hit me this hard um but it has and um I think now it's time to say goodbye to yo thank y'all company. so much man go check out the special I appreciate it youtube.com slash the Andrew Schultz and uh check out Dave's as well man it's a great time for comedy this is exactly what we want to happen this is exactly what we've been speaking about on this podcast on Flagrant 2 about, you know, just letting jokes go and not holding back and not being pussies and saying what you feel and understanding is comedy. And we should be able to say that. So uh, it's a great time for comedy, man. And uh, go go check out those specials. Word. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Now, listen, it is Labor Day weekend. And I know you may be sitting around binge watching your favorite TV shows because you're hearing us talking about all these screaming services and you want to see what a lot of the hype is about behind some of these, uh, even though a couple of them aren't even launched yet. But you'll probably be watching something on Netflix. I know I got a bunch of shows to catch up on on Netflix. But just remember, whatever you do, it's always better with a pint of Ben and Jerry's. Mm. Okay? Now, you heard Andrew Schultz say he liked the chocolate fudge brownie. All right? Some people like the cookie dough. If I had to choose between one, if I had to take a chance, 
on my lactose intolerance, right. it would be the cookie dough. All right, but I want you to cozy up with your favorite flavor, wherever that may be. It's available anywhere ice cream is sold. I'll find a new favorite at benjerry.com. That's B E N J E R R Y.com. Is there, I remember once when we were, um, we were in, uh, where the fuck, we were down south. Do you remember this? Mm -mm. It was your wedding weekend. Oh, and you're talking about fucking um, Kaminsky's. Downtown we, Charleston. We we went. The we brownies were, and ice cream. That's right. We went to downtown Charleston. Yep. And I remember that we had, you were like, chocolate chicken fudge. Shut the fuck brown. up. That never happened. <laughs> no. Okay. Your chocolate <laughs> chicken fudge brownie <laughs> no, ice cream, dude. And it was, I was like, I can't believe this can't be real. And dude, it was, there were feathers coming out of it. With it was one of the chicken, weirdest the chocolate ice chicken was fire. Had, bro, the chocolate chicken fudge that brownie ice fuck. cream. And at Kaminsky's, that was it. That was that it. That was it. And, <laughs> bro, it was it was it was amazing to see you guys eating that thing, man. It it, it was it was delicious, I could, dude. Fucking chicken fingers sticking out the sides of the ice cream. And it chocolate was, covered chicken feet, man, dude. It amazing. was another thing. But I got it. It makes sense. Anyway, guys, love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it, right? <laughs> you knew it was coming out. <laughs>